Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS. It's time for Owens Field Report, sponsored by Les Schwab Tire Centers. Now this week, really, the biggest thing that slowed me down, river conditions. My God, things just went nuts. Explosion dropped down into perfect conditions. I mean, a day's worth of, oh my God, I wish I was out there. Getting phone calls and text messages and photos and not being there was brutal. And then blow out again, and then drops back into absolutely perfect conditions. And I mean everywhere. It doesn't matter if it was up and down the coast or if it was in the valley. It, 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 if you had the day that you could go, it was just a small window of opportunity. We mentioned this last week, that you had to hit it at the right time, on the fall, bottom end of the, of the drop before another explosion. And we're going to show you that, well, we'll get there in a minute. Uh, but things were decent when you're talking about steelhead fishing. Again, I think if the rivers would have been all of them, by the way, would have been a little bit more consistent. Uh, you know, you may have had a little bit better report here and there, but for those that hit it just right, again, based on the conditions, really, really good fishing. Problem is, with those kind of conditions, things change very, very quickly. Fish that do show up into the systems blow right through, and you just had to time it right. So hopefully this upcoming week, uh, we still have an opportunity to get into some of these, I, I guess you could call, late winter steelhead. It is March, believe it or not. Now everybody, and for good reason, are going to be really thinking about spring Chinook. And here in a little bit, we'll have Shane Magnuson on. We're going to be talking about that specifically. Um, but don't quit yet. I mean, there's certainly a large contingent of you out there that don't spend a lot of time chasing winter steelhead and are waiting exclusively for springers. And things are going to come around relatively quickly. But the Willamette, it's going to be a little bit. Let's go ahead and get into the river levels. We'll show you what, we can, what you can actually expect. Uh, going forward. This is the Willamette as of this morning. Uh, stayed exactly on track, just like it was showing uh, last Sunday. Uh, I think it was forecast you'd get into the 18s, but either way, right here at 16.9. It's peaking. Today it's supposed to turn over, and we'll show you river, or the turbidity in a second. All of it doesn't make a difference. You're looking at about a week from now when you might be confident that the conditions are pretty right. But don't overlook right in here. Okay, yeah, the water might still be a little bit off color, but there's a reason why there's so many fish caught in those conditions, especially in March. Is it early? Technically, yes, but absolutely. You have to fish the conditions that you're given. Don't pay attention to the calendar so much because the fish don't care about what the calendar says. They want the smell, tells them to start coming, and when the conditions are right and they can see your baits and everything's working for you, you could have an interesting week but that's gonna be a week or two out. So just kind of keep that in mind. Here's a turbidity. It's up around 40, right? We wanna be in the 11s, you know, double digits down here, 10, 11, fishable, 12, you're starting to get a little, you know, iffy, anything higher than that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely off color, uh, but we got a ways to go and it'll track along with that level that you just saw. So in another couple of weeks, that's when you're gonna start seeing those conditions or week and a half uh, are gonna start coming back around. So. A lot of you are going to be paying attention to the Columbia for good reason. Uh, we haven't added in fish counts yet, but Shane had mentioned just a little bit ago that there was a couple over Bonneville, a couple over the falls, and, you know, temperatures and all those things come into play. We'll talk more uh, about that with Shane here in a bit. Here's the uh, Vancouver gauge on the Columbia. You know, not blown out by any means. Certainly, certainly something to pay attention to. I guess I'd throw it out to you that way. I'm not saying go out there and burn a bunch of bait and spend days on the water trying to get bit. But if you have the time and you don't care about the weather, tops up, you know, drop a hook, mag lips, something like that. Just saying, there's opportunities out there. My home river, you can see what I'm talking about. Blow out, everything's nice and dialed. Day or two, does the same thing. Uh, from here on out though, based on what they're forecasting, again, this is gonna be for all those rivers up uh, in the valley and of course along the coast, you're gonna notice that things are very, very similar. You got some good stuff to look forward to. Again, late winter steelhead, yes. Is it over? No. Uh, there are some options that are out there. Actually, you got, this is that time of year where you've got a, a really good opportunity. Not necessarily you're gonna see summer runs starting to show up already, but you know, you're gonna see the late winter steelhead that are showing up, chromas can be, some that are probably turning their way down river, and some of the in-between sir. So you've got, you know, interesting overlap uh, of fish out there. Look at the Al Seeds, look at that. On Wednesday, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven foot bounce in one day. God, that river is amazing. 
Uh, Nahalem, same thing, just a huge bounce, got into action stage. So yeah, everything is coming right back into shape. Uh, so again, if you have some time this uh, upcoming week and going forward, some of these smaller rivers should uh, produce for you. Hopefully things work out, right? Now, there's a couple of derbies that are going to be going on, and the one that we want to talk about first, because it is uh, down there a ways. I think it was the 4th of May. Am I, oh, I did. I got that correct. It's the uh, Spring Chinook Derby, the Scapoose Boosters, and this is something that we talk about every year. A uh, ton of fun. I miss being able to fish derbies. I haven't been able to do that since we started this gig back in 08, so it's been a long, it's been a long time, but they're a lot of fun, and certainly for good causes, uh, as well. So if you'd like to participate in something fun, uh, they're on the Columbia and the Willamette, or excuse me, I shouldn't say the Columbia, right? That'll be close. <laughs> we'll see how that goes, right? Closes on the 4th, apparently, uh, but on the Willamette, uh, a lot of fun. You can have uh, good opportunities, especially that time of year, uh, to be successful. So make sure you put that on the calendar, the Scapoose Boosters uh, Spring Chinook Derby. Also, send an email to Jason. There's a reason why you need to do that. Uh, they do a weekly giveaway and uh, just send that email, Jason at Procure, and you'll be entered in to win that weekly prize pack. Make sure you take advantage of that if you can. Now, this is the biggest question mark, right? What's the weather gonna do? Nobody better to tell us than Katie. We missed you last weekend, Katie. You know, I was basking in some Texas sun. Oh, <laughs> Texas? I went to the stockyard and the grapevine area with my friends, so. Very cool. I was laying on the grass getting sun, looking at what was about to head our way, thinking, oh, okay, I can yeah. do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, things are, are gonna be interesting as well. What do we got to look forward to? We have several more mornings, just like we've had yesterday and today, to look forward to, at least through Monday morning, where you'll see snow like this falling in the morning, and then some sun breaks in the afternoon, and things turning to a bit more showery conditions. The weather advisory for the coast range goes through tomorrow morning at 4 a.m., and that's for everything that's above 1,000 feet. And then the cascade goes through tonight, or afternoon, early evening, depending on what you think, around 4 o'clock, and that's for everything above 1500 feet and here's what we have during the day you'll notice that there's some green in there and then we get to the morning like this and it's back to the snow chances and then there's the afternoon early evening you have the rain and then you get back into the morning and you have a bit more snow now as far as Monday morning goes that's the day that we're watching for a first alert weather morning one thing I want to show you is we often talk about microclimates and how things can be just a little different within a very short distance this is a really good way to show you and demonstrate what that means as you can look in the Salem Area, which is right about here, we're not expecting any accumulation. But down in South Salem and Tort Turner, you're looking at a potential of an inch to an inch and a half. And I've been watching that today on the cameras where I've seen pretty much just wet in downtown Salem at our Travel Salem camera, and then maybe a snowflake here or there where at Willamette Valley Vineyard, it's been snowing pretty much all morning. Snow levels should be staying right around 1,000, 1,500 feet as we go through Wednesday into Thursday, and then they'll start to go back up. And what that means is we start to see some drier weather, temperatures start warming, and we could potentially be in the low 50s by next Friday, but we all know that has plenty of time to change. <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to next week, I can promise you that. Doesn't look like things are going to be as unstable uh, as they were this past. I had plenty of snow in yeah. Oregon City this morning, enough yeah. to where I was a little concerned coming off the hill. Yeah, and we have a ridge coming in right now, and the El Nino is weakening, so we're starting to see some of the impacts of that. But a ridge coming in with some 50-degree temperatures and sunshine sounds good to me. Very cool. We'll see you tomorrow morning, Katie. Thank you very much. There you go. That gives you your idea what you can expect this upcoming week. Like I said... If you want to get out there on the Columbia, maybe chase that uh, March, early March Springer. Might not be a bad opportunity to do so. Okay, I've got Don on the line from the LC. We'll see if we can get his call in here. When we come back from this break, we're going to have Shane Magnuson from Yakima Bait. We're going to talk about the buy three, get one free deal over at Fisherman's Marine, why you want to take advantage of that. But we're going to spend a couple of segments as well talking about nothing but Springers. If you have questions, that you might want to have an expert answer for you rather than me. I don't blame you at all. Call us up on the viewer hotline. It's 503-548-6777. We'll be right back. Outdoor GPS is brought to you by P-Line, because we fish, by Hawkin Fishing, perfection in fishing gear, and by Haxton's Canvas and Upholstery, the trusted name of the Pacific Northwest. 